Welcome to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness. Today, I have a firecracker on my show. Um, I was on Facebook the other day, and I saw a lady post that she had just gotten fired from her job at a hospital for not taking the vaccine. And I was like, um, okay, I need to have her on because this is something I've been wanting to talk to you about, talk about with someone for a while. So I am joined by Michelle Tanner. Hi, Michelle. Hey, thanks for having me. You're welcome. So you are an RN, is that correct? I'm actually a board certified family nurse practitioner is my oh. official title. So I wasn't, you know, for those who don't know, that means I was an RN, you know, for a lot of years and then went back to school, um, got a master's degree. And now for the last six, seven years, I've worked as a nurse practitioner. Right, which is like it's very similar to a doctor. I mean, it's really yeah, very you know, especially here in Utah where we're at, we have independent practice. So I actually do own my own small clinic on the side as well, and you know, prescribe medications and and all all those things similar to what a physician does, just a little different, different role, different degree. Right. My mom's a nurse practitioner, so oh, that's awesome. Um, so. Tell us, I mean, one of the things that I saw in your story was that you kind of saw the writing on the wall before this happened, like, like a lot of people do. They know they're going to have to make a decision. And so you had already planned and had some side um, or businesses going at the time. I kind of want to hear about that, too, because a lot of people are going to have to make that decision soon. Yeah. And so it's better to start building something on the side, just like I think a lot of us need to build a parallel economy. Um, you know, just like we need parallel media, we right? Can't, we can't trust the mainstream um, economy anymore if we're going to have this kind of thing going on. Um, even without the mandate, if you have companies that are deciding to go that route, then we're going to have to find a way um, if we don't want the, the vaccine. Or like me, I took the vaccine for personal reasons, but I refuse to use my vaccine card anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. That's how my family is too. Yeah. yeah, most of my family is vaccinated and they are 100% the same way is you have no right to check my personal health decision. I'm not showing you my papers. It's none of your business. Right. Well, and back to, to me, you know, it's funny. I posted this on Facebook one day to see if people would get where I was going. But I said, what are you doing with your vaccine privilege? Because, you know, we're always white people supposedly privilege. have a privilege, right? Yeah. So, you know, nobody really got what I was saying. But that's what it feels like. It's like we are, we're creating this uh, segregation, these two classes, the right. vaccinated and the non-vaccinated. Well, if I get the vaccine, and honestly, I just did it out of obedience to our prophet. For those of us that don't know, the members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, our prophet urged us to take the vaccine. We're not going to get into all that because everyone has an opinion on it. That's fine. You have to make that decision for yourself. I did. I'm not, however, going to be getting any boosters. <laughs> I did it purely out of that reason. And... Yeah. Um, my kids are not going to get it, but I refuse to play into that system of you now have these privileges that nobody else has that's not vaccinated, and I just refuse to do that. So if someone's requiring a vaccine, I'm not going to participate in whatever that is. I'm not. I actually burned my card on a YouTube on one of my. Um, oh, that's episodes. great! I love that. Yeah, because we don't need. We. I'm not going to be using it. Yeah, I'm not doing anything an unvaccinated person can't do. So um, tell us about how this all came about and what you were doing to prepare for losing your job. Yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, seeing the writing on the wall, I mean, I would say even several years ago, you know, when I started my business, actually, my, my small little clinic I have on the side was about three years ago. And, you know, working in healthcare for 15 plus years, I just knew, you know, really how, what my value was, right, to the higher ups. There's only so far you can go in medicine, especially as a nurse practitioner. Um, you know, we're not really valued as much as probably what we really should be. And, you know, it's not that I don't work with amazing people and that great people aren't in the healthcare system. It's just that I knew that I wasn't going to reach my true potential <laughs> in that healthcare setting. And, I am a big advocate of freedom and you have certain constraints when you are an employee of someone else, right? And so, you know, three years ago, I, I recognized that I needed to do my own thing and really pursue that, which I have thankfully done and have been successful with. But I've been saying for over a year 
that vaccine mandates are coming and to prepare. And that's where this whole, you know, even early on in the pandemic, I was saying vaccine passports are where we're headed. And people would say, you're crazy, conspiracy theorist, whatever. But, you know, I absolutely knew that was where we were headed. And so, you know, last, well, I guess it's been July, 2020, it, you know, toward the beginning part of the pandemic, I was actually nine months pregnant. Mm. I was working in the emergency department and I was doing a ton of research at the time, you know, being a mom, right. And a healthcare provider, frontline healthcare provider. I wanted to make sure I was doing everything I could to protect my family, protect myself, and the school board here came out and said, we will be mandating masks on elementary children. Mm -hmm. And I had already been doing a ton of research on masks. We don't have to delve into that really here. I'm not against masks, you know, but as far as the utility on forcing that on healthy elementary children, it is ludicrous, borderline child abuse. And that was really my tipping point of whoa, 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 what are we allowing to happen in this country? And if we're mandating this without it, even the scientific evidence to back it up, this is crazy. And I was, you know, calling all the physicians that I trust and, and other people thinking, okay, wait, am I crazy? What am I missing here? Please show me some like golden study that proves without a doubt that this is what we should be doing. And of course, you know, nobody could provide that. It was just kind of this, yeah, you're right. We don't know. We disagree, but what do we do? And so I started speaking out publicly on social media, public events, and I had some backlash. I, you know, even family members calling saying, you've got to take your post down this is, you're going to lose your job. Here I am nine months pregnant, the primary care or the primary um, breadwinner for my family. It's a big deal if I lose my job. Mm -hmm. And I really, in that moment, had to make a very conscious decision to fear God more than man and speak the truth. And I knew in my heart and soul that I needed to keep speaking. Come what may, people aren't gonna like it. I've been reported to the hospital, you know, called up by administrators and, and questions for things I'm saying, you know, against masking healthy elementary children. And I just have felt passionately that we cannot be silent. The silent majority, we cannot be silent anymore because I truly believe we are the majority. And so that's really been the last year. I've been very vocal about the mandates are coming. I've been preparing. I, Intermountain Healthcare here in Utah came out last week and said that if you are not vaccinated by the 1st of January, essentially you will be let go. You will be fired. And so me having natural immunity, I actually, you know, I was breastfeeding my baby. I did not feel comfortable getting a vaccine while I was breastfeeding Breastfeeding and pregnant women were excluded from clinical trials. I do not want me or my baby to be part of the experiment. And I'm not anti-vaccine, by the way. I have all of the other vaccinations. My children have childhood vaccinations. It's not about being anti-vaccine. I just didn't feel comfortable while I was nursing. And then I actually contracted COVID. So I've had COVID now, thankfully made a full recovery. And I have that natural immunity. And so I emailed my bosses, since I'm actually a contracted employee, and I said, look, are we going to be acknowledging natural immunity with these mandates? Because we have 15 plus scientific studies showing natural immunity is every bit as good, if not better in, in some studies than the vaccine immunity. And literally, the response I got back and granted, I've worked here six years. The last year I've been very part-time, but I'm still an employee there. I don't want to brag, but I am very good at what I do. To my knowledge, I've never had a patient complaint. And the response I get back from asking about natural immunity is, we assume based off of your question that you are not vaccinated. We will work on getting your shifts filled by another provider. Oh, wow. So they yeah. did not even address the natural immunity question. 
Yeah, they did a little bit. I've had a couple, you know, of corresponding emails back and forth because I've, you know, sent studies and they, of course, you know, want to be very politically correct, right, in their responses back. But essentially their response was whether you have natural immunity or not, we across the board recommend vaccination as the best course of action, you know, so they, they don't care essentially about any science that supports natural immunity. They're only supporting everybody across the board getting a vaccine. Yeah, you know, and and that's I have been beating that drum for a long time. I was um, I was glad to see on your Facebook page that you've been talking about natural immunity. You know, and I had Dr. Barkey on. I've had him on several times. One of America's oh yeah, doctors. yeah, he's great. He's like awesome. Um, and you know, some of the stuff that he sent me, some of these studies, sort of imply. That natural, if, if you get the vaccine when you have natural immunity, it actually is can be harmful to you. And also what I kind of see from the vaccine is it looks to me like it's actually causing the variant, the Delta variant. So there are a lot of questions out there about this vaccine. But yeah, the fact that it's being totally ignored and has been ignored for a long time, it just flies in the face of logic. And right. so even from the beginning, before the press finally started talking about natural immunity, even like questioning Fauci about it, right? Right. Like before that, for several months before that, I've been beating the same drum. Hey, why are we not talking about natural immunity? What right. This is a giant hole in this whole situation. Like, okay, I can see you, the vaccine. You think it's health and sa it's safety and effective, whatever. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It's looking less effective over time. And I don't think it's all that safe. I mean, maybe for the vast majority of people it is, but there are enough people that are having side effects, especially young men that- Right, yeah, not, myocarditis. Yeah, it's not something that you would just take and think, oh yeah, no problem, like the flu shot that you get every year, yeah. right? Everything has risks. Yeah, and so um, the fact that they wouldn't talk about natural immunity at all, it, it to me, it says there is another agenda here or else that right. would be part of it. Obviously, there's another agenda here. Right. And um, so that's, yeah, that uh, the fact and the fact that a, a health facility, a hospital or whatever, won't even address it. It's so bizarre because, you know, I'll have private conversations with physicians all the time. And essentially, they agree with me. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I wasn't going to get the vaccine if I had the antibodies. I, I get it. But then at the end of the day, when it comes down to the mandate, because they do ultimately feel like everyone needs to be vaccinated, they're not going to fight against it because it's something they, they think they want everyone to do. They think it's beneficial. And I'm not saying it's not. I think in, in many circumstances, the vaccine's a great option, you know, but it's, it's not a one size fits all blanket approach. It's completely inappropriate to do that, especially with it doesn't matter how great this vaccine is. We literally have one year mm -hmm. of data in humans, one year yeah. on a you know newer vaccine technology. And you cannot mandate someone to essentially be part of a phase four clinical trial. Right. It's it's unethical, it's inhumane, it's illegal. Well, and and this is something that I've talked about. I had a couple of mama bears on my radio show recently, and we talked about um we, we've had the mask mandate in the schools here in Douglas County, in Colorado. Oh, yeah. um, I know. So it woke up many, many, many of us parents. And uh, yeah. for some reason, and I think I, I posit this, I think a lot of women are waking up because our intuition tells us, even if, even before we logic the whole thing out, our intuition tells us something's wrong here. Something Absolutely. is wrong. And I don't know that men necessarily have that. They logic it out pretty well, but I don't know that their intuition tells them as, as much as it does women. But um, we, you know, we went, we have gone to the mat about this mask mandate thing. And to, luckily we just won our school board election here. We, we, they put us on Fox news and stuff because oh, that's it's a great. Deal that we kicked out um, three or four of our school board members and got four new ones that are all against all the mandates. But I mean, we've done the protests here. We've, we've been in the face of the school board members at these school board meetings, right? Like we have- domestic terrorist. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, did an issue, I did an episode on that too. But there were up to, there were a hundred of us that signed up for the last school board to make comments at the last meeting. And so, but they still weren't, they didn't want to hear it. Anyway, that mask mandate is why the school board got flipped. And so I can't wait for them to do their magic and get this thing out of there. 
Yeah. But the point I'm, I'm trying to get to is that so many of us parents have decided to, to push back so hard on this mask. I mean, a lot of reasons, but at the end of the day, the biggest reason I think for us is that we see the next hill. We're willing to die on the mask hill because we see the next hill is the vaccine hill. Absolutely, it is. It's coming. And we're not doing it. Uh uh. Sorry. I kept my kids in through the mask mandate, even though I hated it. And I'm subbing in the schools right now. So I have to wear this stupid mask for now. Mm -hmm. But there's no way I'm ever going to vaccinate these kids. And like you, I'm not anti vaccine. They've got all their normal vaccines, but right. not this one. No, yeah. no, 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 no. No way. You have to be able to weigh those risks and benefits. And thankfully, mm -hmm. children, by and large, literally have a zero. I mean, 0. 0.0001. Eventually, there's a one in there, right? Because, of course, there's going to be a handful of, you know, kids, especially, you know, sadly, with comorbidities and, um, you know, diabetes, obesity, leukemia, cancers, things like that obviously put you at a higher risk that maybe as a parent, you could weigh that risk benefit profile differently depending on your child. But the vast majority of children are healthy and it's like your risk from COVID. I mean, literally when we had COVID in my house, both of my children, zero symptoms, I tested them for the antibodies afterward. They both had the antibodies, never got sick. Like, and we're going to expose them to this new vaccine that, I mean, regardless, I mean, one year of data in humans and in children, I mean, you look at the, the uh, studies they did on the 12 to 16 year olds. I mean, I think it lasted a total of like maybe six weeks, the entire study of 2,200 kids with 15 or 18 COVID cases total. And you're gonna, based off of that data say, okay, it's safe for everyone and ignore the increased heart risks and the unknowns for literally a disease that doesn't affect them. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, you know, I I've heard too many times of women, pregnant women, I don't understand this at all, taking the vaccine, which I'm like, are you nuts? But they take the vaccine and then they lose the baby. And I've heard that on, and I'm like, okay, so that tells me that there's a possibility that they, this may affect the uh, children's ability to conceive down the road or I, who knows? Now, that's the problem is we don't know. And anyone who tells you that they do know, they're lying. They're like, we don't know. There's not enough time has passed to know the answer to many of these questions. And the, this is not polio. The kids are not going to be, um, become uh, paralyzed. I mean, like I said, there's, there's little to no risk. I think I don't know if my kids have had it or not. I, I was tested for the antibodies. I didn't have them, even though I'm almost positive that I've had COVID at least once, but whatever. Yeah. Um, I, and I've seen kids get sick. I don't, I have not seen anyone die. You're right. It's, I think we've had, I want to say 600 and some childhood deaths in the U.S. And the vast majority of those had leukemia or something else with it. Right. So yeah. I think I read somewhere that they're more, um, they're more at risk of dying from a lightning strike or something like that. <laughs> right. Statistically yeah. speaking. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And you think about the mandated masks and vaccines and schools and it's like you drive your kid to school. I mean, they are mm. 10 times more likely to be harmed in the, the car ride to school than they are from COVID. It's... And yet the government's not um, telling us we can't drive anymore. So right. just tells you there's, there's an agenda here. There and absolutely is. Once we give up bodily autonomy, it's all, it's all good. You know, what, what's next? Game over. Yeah. What can you buy? What can you wear? What can you do? I mean, it's, I don't think people understand right. the ramifications of allowing this kind of thing to just yeah. stay. Well, and it, that's part of the argument, right? With the, the mandating the vaccines in the hospitals of, oh, well, we have to mandate it because you're taking up a hospital bed, right? Because the majority of patients, and it's actually increasing to be, you know, not as the majority with Delta, but early on, you know, summertime, it was the vast majority of patients hospitalized were unvaccinated. And so that was the big argument of, well, we have to mandate it because they're taking up a hospital bed. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use that logic, are you then going to mandate physical exercise, what you're eating? Because the vast majority of patients hospitalized are obese. Yep. You know, cardiac disease, we all know what that's mm -hmm. caused by in general. So it's a very, very slippery slope. You cannot give away bodily autonomy. Yeah, you just can't. You know, 
Um, I want to get your opinion on this since you are a healthcare provider. Um, the uh, Pfizer pill that's coming out right now, the antiviral. Did you hear about this one? This, this, they just announced this, I think, yesterday or the day before. That yeah. supposedly it keeps something like 90% of, it prevents like 90% of hospitalizations and deaths in COVID. And it's an antiviral. It's not uh, a vaccine. Yeah, I need to do more research on that. If it's the one that I'm thinking of, I've been told, which again, I, I need to research it in depth, but someone was telling me that, oh yeah, that's basically, you know, ivermectin relabeled into, <laughs> into another medication, right? But now because they can make money from it, then, uh -huh. you know, this, this is the safe and effective treatment. I hope it is. <laughs> you know what? The, the, but the thing to me that if this is true, if it really is, um, and I hope it is ivermectin, but if it really is that effective at treating people, doesn't this take the vaccine mandate and just turn it on its head? Because there's no justification for a right. vaccine if you have a treatment that good. Right. Well, you look at the emergency use authorization, right, which still nobody can answer the question for me of how in the world we're going to start mandating vaccines or even, you know, allow children to get these vaccines under emergency use when there literally is no emergency in kids. I mean, there's no debating that. But aside from that, I mean, yeah, you, you think about it, you can't have an emergency use authorization if you have effective treatments available. So yeah, of course, no wonder so many people are being censored who wants to even talk about or have a discussion about potential treatments out there, right? I mean, heaven forbid any medical professionals talk about that. Mm -hmm. So it's been very eye-opening to see the manipulation, the corruption. And I honestly think if public health officials would have just been open and honest from the get-go of, hey, this is what we do know, this is what we don't know, I actually think more people would be vaccinated. But we as people, even people who have no knowledge of medicine, we can feel and sense when we are being manipulated. And that is 100% between the media messaging, the public health, what's happening in our, you know, with our healthcare facilities. That's what's happening is it's, it's manipulation and coercion. Mm -hmm. Fauci. Uh, just, you only need to say one name, one word. And he, right. <laughs> I remember when, when this first was going down, you know, it's been, it's, we're into 20 months now, which is insane. Yeah. But, um, I can remember posting something on Facebook. I was probably a year ago um, about Fauci and what a, you know, bad guy he was, a, a relative. He's just trying to help us. You know, I'm like, there are too many people that honestly believe that. That's what, that's why we have, we are where we're at right now, you know? Right. But I'm really hoping, I, I am really hoping that this, because this is Pfizer now, right? This is not, you know, any like America's frontline doctors or anyone else that's, you know, is trying to push an alternative um, uh, treatment. This is Pfizer, right? right? right. So this is not going to be swept under the rug. This is not going to be demonized like ivermectin, although it's going to be so hilarious if it turns out to be that. It is not going to be demonized, right? It's going to be embraced because Pfizer is going to make big money. And they're the ones that, you know, pay for uh, like uh, advertising on newscasts and things. This is why the news media is along with it. They're getting big money from, from big tech, right. from big pharma. Well, I mean, you even look at the, you know, like the American Academy of Pediatrics, who, you know, of course, is going to recommend, recommend the, the vaccine and, you know, anything Pfizer puts out, Pfizer has donated big money to the American Academy of Pediatrics. I mean, if that's not a conflict of interest, I don't know what is. So I'm, I'm holding out hope that this, this, um, because it's, they had, I mean, they had a press conference, it's out there. So I'm really hoping that this will turn a corner on this whole thing for us because you can't, yeah. they're not going to demonize um, Pfizer. But. Right. Yeah. That'll be so, interesting. So, so you have been officially let go now? So no, technically no, because I, so, you know, I told you about the email that I got basically uh -huh. saying, we'll work on getting your shifts covered since it sounds like you're refusing vaccination. And I'm like, well, I, I was literally scheduled to work the following day. And I still have a few shifts, November, December. And I said, so can I still work my shifts? They never got back to me 
but I did see that they took me off the January schedule. Mm. So basically it sounds like I'm okay to work, you know, through the holiday months for my shifts and then, you know, give them a couple months and they'll, they'll get my shifts filled for January, which I mean, I'm absolutely not quitting. So I will keep showing up to work until I am officially booted out the door. So yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens because there's a lot of people especially in my community here in St. George, who are very much along the same page as me. There's in fact another ER practitioner who's worked there 25 years and does not want the vaccine. That's her choice to make. And she will, she'll be let go at the end of the year if they continue with this mandate. Yeah. And it's going to be really, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. Yeah, we're already short staffed. That's the thing. And, you know, our community has grown quite a bit throughout COVID. And, you know, already our hospital is too small for our community. And now you're going to cut potentially 20% of the staff. I mean, it it makes no sense. And even from a city council perspective, I don't know if we talked about that yet, but I'm newly elected to the city council here. And I'm like, this is a disaster for our community, for the health care that's really our only option for healthcare in this community is Intermountain. So what happens when they don't have the staff there when you're sick or get in an tr- accident or, you know, the things that happen in life? So are you as a congratulations on that, by the way? Thank you. Uh, that it just goes to show, I mean, not to denigrate your, your qualifications or anything, but a lot of people like you are being um, elected right now who are standing up for liberties Because so many people, like you said, the silent majority, there are a lot of people out there that feel exactly like you do, but they're not saying anything, but they're voting for you. Yeah. Because they need someone. They want someone that'll come in there and stand up for their liberties. Just like the school board here that we just flipped. Yeah. You know, I I didn't even really pay attention to school board um, (laughs) campaigns and uh, elections until now. But, oh boy. This one, I was very, very active in helping to get these people elected. And if I was in St. George, I would have campaigned for you too, because we need people like you who are willing to step up and say what needs to be said and do what needs to be done. So I'm wondering if uh, as a city councilwoman, are you going to be able to approach Intermountain Health and say, you guys, don't you see, don't you see the um, crisis that you're going to create here? Right. And, you know, I think it'll be really interesting to see actually just literally before we jumped on this call, someone sent me a link and maybe you know about this. I mean, I think it literally was just released in the news like 30 minutes ago or an hour ago that the Supreme Court has turned over the, you know, Biden's mandate on the no, vaccine. How, have I, how do I know? I mean, literally just now. So I can't even give you the details because it was just like a short blurb that someone sent me before I jumped on. So when I saw that, I thought, well, what's Intermountain going to do now? Because now they can't use the excuse that the federal government is forcing their hand. So are they going to retract the mandate or oh. are they going to continue it as a, a private company? I don't know, because I talked to a lot of the providers at Intermountain, and essentially everyone I talked to personally is against the mandate. Now, I haven't spoken with the person at the tippity top. I know, at least from what I hear, they tend to be more of a progressive, elitist type. So I, you know, I don't know if they truly want the mandate, regardless of if they feel the government's forcing them or not. It'll be really interesting to see what happens here. I'm literally getting onto my phone right now and Googling Supreme Court decisions. I know. Yeah, please do. Because literally it just popped um, up. I I can't, I, I don't see an email. I usually get emails like immediately on stuff like this. So, um, I'm, let's see, Supreme Court decision, yeah, I can pull up the message um, too. Because the only the only thing I think they could have done this quickly is um, um, yeah, it says Biden's oh, vaccine mandate awesome. for companies temporarily halted by federal appeals. So it says it's temporary temporarily halted. Okay. So now that it's halted, it's and like you know, the state like Utah has a um, 
a lawsuit along with several other states. So it'll be interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, a, that's why I, I was hoping, kind of hoping that this um, Pfizer, even though I hate Pfizer, um, I was kind of hoping that they, that would be a game changer because otherwise we are in, yeah. Okay. Appeals. It was not the Supreme court, but it says appeals court temporarily okay. halts rule on larger businesses that would require vaccine or weekly tests. Okay. So, um, if we don't, if, if this Pfizer thing is not enough, which even Biden cannot argue against this. I mean, he can't, I mean, he's so stupid. I mean, the arguments that he makes are totally illogical anyway. Like what, okay, the vaccine's gonna protect you, but everyone's gotta get the vaccine to protect you that are vaccinated. Right. Anyway, um, if, if, the, if the Pfizer thing is not enough to convince Biden and other people that want this thing to right. stop the vaccine, then what's gonna have to happen next is a ton of, uh, um, court case, a ton of legis or not legislation, but um, a, a ton of court cases are going to have to go forward to fight this. Right. Absolutely. Because, and like the, like the Daily Wire has got, I think they're going to join up with the blaze. I mean, people are going to take this on. Oh yeah. People are fighting this. Absolutely. Yeah. It just sucks because it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of man hours to do it, but yeah. better than letting it stand. So uh, that's really good news about the appeals court. I mean, I think states, I don't even know why states honestly have lawsuits against it. We have the 10th Amendment. Uh, states are sovereign. Well, we shouldn't even be acknowledging their no, authority. The problem is that I would agree with that, but the only problem is that this is a federal action. And so people that are, are federal employees are, yeah. are SOL, even when it comes to living in the state. So they would have to leave that employment. Right. Now, OSHA, that's a whole other, see that, I think that's where our 10th Amendment should step in and say, yeah, you can't come in here and um, put a, a mandate on private businesses from right. the federal government. Now, if you're a federal worker, you're SOL. And I guess people need to stop working for the federal government if that's the case. But to come right. into a state and, and start pushing around um, private industry, that's where, yeah, we've got a problem with the 10th Amendment and all. Uh, well, and the, the problem too with that, because they will try to say, oh, well, you know, private businesses, they can do what they want. You know, you look at healthcare, for instance, where we already have several vaccines that are required in order to work. And so they'll say, what's the big deal? You already have to get the flu shot every year. Well, there's a couple of issues with that. A, I have never been forced to get a varicella vaccine. Mm -hmm. And that's because I've had the natural infection. I've had the chicken pox. It would be ridiculous to force me to get a varicella vaccine. All I've ever had to do in a healthcare job is say, oh, I've had the chicken pox. I've had a pass. You have that aspect of it, of ignoring the natural immunity, but then you also have the fact of literally back to the, we have one year of data in humans. When I signed my contract, I knew the vaccinations I was signing up for. I was not signing up to be part of phase four clinical trials. That was, it absolutely is a violation of the 14th amendment, the equal protection clause of discriminating against me for having natural immunity versus vaccine immunity. It absolutely is a violation. Right, and I think you're right to keep, to stick around and make them fire you because yeah. then you have a lawsuit. Yeah. Where they probably want you to quit, which is why they're like, oh, well. Oh, they would love for me to quit. They've wanted me to quit ever since I've been speaking out publicly for the last year because these big businesses, especially in healthcare right now, they don't want people going against the grain. They, you know, none of that whistleblowers. I mean, if you are squeaky at all, they don't want you around. So I absolutely believe they probably would love for me to quit. I love my job though. I'm there. I'm not honestly there because I need the money mm -hmm. because I have my business. I'm there because I have a passion for emergency medicine. I love what I do. I'm good at what I do. Mm -hmm. And I had planned literally to be there for the rest of my life, even if on a very part-time basis. So I'm absolutely not quitting. Yeah. Good for you. Well, we'll see what happens with this court. Um, uh, appeals court decision. I'm going to have to read up on this when we uh, get done recording this. Wow. Yeah, they yeah, I know. I need to read up on it. Something, jeez, you know. Right. I, I, I've been telling people, okay, we do have these little victories, like you know the um, the Virginia election. I mean, we see we see some liberty-minded people stepping up and starting to make things happen. 
Yeah. Guess what? I think people need to get used to the idea of this is the rest of our life. If, if we want to maintain a free country, get used to the idea of being an activist mm -hmm. and being fully informed and, and going to bat for yourself and for your kids for the rest of your life. Where there's no, we can no longer be complacent and just, oh, I'll just vote every two years and every four years, whatever right. um, offices are, are up. We can't. We cannot yeah. do that anymore. We don't have that luxury because we have, obviously, an agenda here. And right. this has been going on since before time like this to me this is just the war in heaven continuing on earth oh yeah agency just, versus oppression yeah and it's heating up because america is. is pretty much the last bastion of freedom i mean look at what's going on in australia i never would have expected that out of the aussies right I mean, yeah they're they're gone, fighting oh they've gone full authoritarian new zealand i mean yeah now, sweden was surprising because they stayed open but yeah. there are not many countries that are are fully free anymore i mean it's just insane so if we want to keep our freedom this is it this is the last stand we've got to take it Absolutely. right here in these countries so i would say that's you know if there's any silver lining of the last 20 months that's that is the silver lining is that a lot of us have woken up and realized whoa 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 i mean yes this has been going on for years the socialist communist agenda trickling in but now they're not even trying to hide it anymore and like you're saying, this, this is our new normal of stepping up and saying absolutely not because government gains its power from the consent of the governed ultimately. And that's why we have to be so vigilant at not consenting to tyranny. Yep, exactly. So, well, um, again, congratulations on um, taking Thank office. You. And um, I know you were in a protest A protest today. Was it against uh, Intermountain Health? Is that what you were doing? Yeah, you know, it was actually really empowering because I think we a lot of times tend to feel like we're alone in this battle or am I crazy? What am I missing? And we're really not alone. This protest that we just did here in the community outside of Intermountains Hospital protesting the mandate, you know, not against the vaccine, against the mandate, mm -hmm. it was powerful. We had, I mean, trauma surgeons there, nurses, respiratory therapists, so many people from the hospital community, but then also you know, great grandmothers telling me this is my first protest, but I'm here because I care about my great grandkids. I had my baby there, my one-year-old. It was such a huge, great event, great turnout. And it really brings me hope to know that our movement is strong. It is powerful. Liberty, light, and truth does win. We know who wins in the end. And we'll keep pressing forward all day long and fighting on the right side of this. Awesome. Uh, do you think the hospital is going to hear you guys? Do you think that this is going to make any difference? Oh, I know they've heard us. I, uh, they <laughs> Any thoughts? Any what was that? Did they did have they reacted at all or? Um, so th there was a news article that we did yesterday with ABC Four News, and the uh, one of the spokespeople for Intermountain was very upset that they told our side of the story. <laughs> And so I know I did a few other media interviews this morning at the protest. So it'll be interesting to see when those those come out. And I mean, absolutely, all of Intermountain knew about this protest. So it wasn't a secret. We're doing it again next Saturday. Although we'll see what happens with this new appeals court if Intermountain's going to change its mind. We'll see. I don't. I, I'm a realist. I don't expect that they are going to necessarily change their minds, but I certainly at the very least want them to know that literally the entire community adamantly disagrees with their actions. I know they want to blame it on the federal government, which I understand to an extent, but ultimately, we have a moral responsibility, even as a, if you're a corporation, I don't care if you're a big business, an individual, we have to stand up against tyranny on whatever level you're on. So you can't just do this little Eichmann behavior mm -hmm. and blame it on someone else and say, I was just following orders. No, 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 no. That does not fly here. And we will hold you accountable. Oh, yeah. I mean, the federal government only has the power that we give them. 
So Absolutely. as soon as we say we're not complying, if a, if an entire hospital or a health care uh, group or whatever says we're not complying, what are they going to do? Are they going to exactly. come back down a hospital? I don't think so. Exactly. You know, and hello, you're in St. George. This is a pretty conservative city. Right. Down. So dumb. Yes. So I, and I want to also comment on that, um, the whole protest thing. Um, I went to one down here in Castle Rock um, when this whole mask mandate, because they, they pulled a bait and switch on us. We didn't have masks for the first week of school. And then after they told us, yeah, we're not going to have a mandate. Like literally we can have later. Oh, the numbers. I'm like, the numbers did not change in the last wow. week and a half. You wow. guys pulled a fast one on us. So uh, something like a thousand people showed up down at the district school district office with signs Good. and everything. And you know what? I went out to, tar or to the dollar store and bought me some of those thick, like foamy sign thingies yeah. just to keep at my house because you never know when the next protest is going to be. So that's what I would recommend. People, get some signage, you know, that you can write. Uh, keep it in your house so that next time there's a protest, you're ready. And yeah. just meet, just assume that this is going to be the way that it's going to go for the rest of your life because that is, is things are not going to magically get better. We right. are going to have to keep pushing back for the rest right. of our lives and teach our kids the Constitution, the Declaration, the founders, teach them what this country is all about because they're not getting it in school. Absolutely. So, totally yeah. agree. 100%. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. I won't keep you any longer, but um, I may have to see if I can get you to come back on again sometime. And I yeah, I'd love to. Going down there, um, I, I have a, uh, an affection for St. George because I like Utah, but I don't like snow. So I often, Come on down. We'll, yeah. we'll gladly have you down here. We've got an <laughs> amazing community down here. We really it's, do. It's beautiful, too. Yeah, I love it. It is. The red rocks and the red sand and everything. So, yeah. Right. So this has been Michelle Tanner. Again, thank you so much for showing up. And best of luck to you. I'll be checking in with you to see how Thank things you. are going. Okay, you're awesome, Annette. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness. Please email me and Annette at AnnetteTalks.com with your comments or um, post your comments on YouTube or find me on Facebook, Annette Bybee, and um, let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to Annette on Life, Liberty, and Happiness, where freedom lovers gather.